That didn't work. Go stream out, work every cent I pay for you. G'day, Groovers. It's a uh, Tuesday night in Australia at 6 p.m. This is a real time home from work, let's cook dinner and hopefully have it all done and we're able to watch MasterChef or whatever we want to do. Um, so, yeah, haven't prepped a thing, but I'm going to turn on the water first. We're making pasta, so I've put water in a pot with some salt for our spaghetti. I'm going to chuck that on and I'm also going to crank up the oven to 240 degrees Celsius, 475 degrees Fahrenheit. Hey, Francesca. Um, I promise you I won't play 1927 this evening. What was I saying? 240, 475 Fahrenheit, 240, so pretty high because we're going to be roasting uh, cauliflower. Now, I don't think I've ever made a pasta with cauliflower in it before. I've definitely made cauliflower rice and cauliflower cheese. I even make a cauliflower mac and cheese. It's really yummy. But cauliflower and pasta. But this is cheap and cheery cooking, so I'm trying to find recipes that I reckon are pretty affordable. Good news. What, the no 1927? <laughs> Hey, come on. I will never sing again, though. I forgot about the delay, like when you play a song and then there's a delay even for us hearing it, so it sounds terrible. I won't do that again. So the water's on, the oven's on. First, we're going to prep up some cauliflower. I have put in the description the approximate cost from Coles. I just Googled what the ingredients will cost you from Cole supermarket at the moment, but I usually buy my fruit and veggies and stuff like that from... Um, farmer's markets and a local grocer's market, but I did actually purchase Coles cauliflower. Um, so, yeah, the, the estimate cost is in there, but this pasta will feed, they say it serves four. I'm going to make the full recipe because I don't mind eating leftover pasta for the next couple of days, and I love me a tuna pasta. And pasta is another, I think, good staple that you can make lots of affordable meals with it goes a long way and I reckon the cauliflower will even make it more filling so you might get six or eight serves out of it depending on how much how many mouths you've got to feed and how much you like to eat um but I mean I will be doing some sauces soon some pasta sauces that are so simple like olive oil garlic bit of lemon some chili that's it there's even cheaper pastas than this one this one's a bit posh too because you can add capers, but I Googled the cost of capers and a jar of capers at Coles is $2.70 and if you love them, they're good little flavour pops, but also a jar of capers lasts like such a long time. So if you do feel a bit extravagant, you want to posh this up a little bit, chuck in some capers. But first, let's get the cauliflower ready for some roasting. We're going to roast it on an oven tray and we need to put some baking paper on there. I haven't prepped a thing. This is going to be cooking as you go. Just a bit of cooking spray on the tray first to hold the paper and thing on. But yeah, this is attempting to show how quickly you can rustle up a yummy dinner. In no time at all. I like capers too. Whenever there's a recipe that has olives in it, I don't eat olives, so I sub out the olives and I often will chuck, depending on what it is, but I'll often chuck in capers as an alternative to the olive. So there's a little baking tray. We'll just chop up the cauliflower. Now I think I've Googled it and this is $2.70. I mean, it's ridiculous. And also... This is a little bit past its use by date. I bought it a while ago, but um, I don't care. It hasn't gone to a point that I wouldn't eat it yet. So we're having it. 
it's going to be roasted within an inch of its life anyway. So you need a 500 gram ish amount of cauliflower. I don't even know what this equates to. I just went for the half cauliflower. Normally I'd go to a farmer's market and buy a whole one, but because of the cost of everything now, like you want to make sure you use everything up. And to be honest, I do love cauliflower, but I couldn't eat it for a week. And a whole cauliflower for me and the occasional second mouth here, no. Nah. I'd rather get the half -er. Some of the farmer's markets do smaller cauliflowers or they do... Um, grabbing my compost bowl, um, although they will do smaller portions as well, but I'm just shaving a little bit of the bit where it's gone a bit minging off because I'm a bit fussy like that. Like my hippie friends would eat everything, even if it's got a bit of mould in it. I'm not quite that okay with that stuff. It's partly because I've got a bit of a histamine intolerance and old food is one of the things that can make it flare up and it's not fun it's like extreme hay fever and then we're just going to cut it into little florets I mean it's pasta so you don't want to go giant ones I'm going to sort of go for that kind of little size but I'm just pulling it apart at the moment and if a knife needs to get involved, we'll bring the knife into it. Alone at last. Well, you may not be, Tony, because Francesca's here too, but it, I am simulcast on two different channels, so you might each have a channel to yourself at the moment. Lots of people can't stand cauliflower, but I think that goes back to our childhoods when our mothers would just boil the crap out of it. And it had no flavour at all. When mum made cauliflower cheese, it was a happy day in our house. Um, also, some people would do the stems as well, but I'm not. It's pasta. You don't want a big, chunky cauliflower stem. But if you were going to make a veggie soup or something, keep all of those things. If you want in a little bag in your fridge and when you make a veggie soup, one that you're going to blend up, chuck all that stuff in. Or if you're making like a veggie stock or a chicken stock or whatever, But, you know, part of cooking food that you like is not feeling like you have to add things that you don't actually enjoy eating. It's you and your fave. Well, it's my faves, actually. Francesca, my favourite person to block. <laughs> I've done it twice accidentally. You have. You've got exclusive channels all to yourself. There, there were some other people watching, but they didn't say anything. I mean, it's a terrible time to be live in Australia because most people are getting home from work right now, like I just have, and cooking dinner. But I thought it'd be fun to do a real-time let's go, let's see what it's like after a day at work, what this dish is like. But, I, th I mean, I love cauliflower when it's poshed up a bit, like roasting it. It's going to get roasted with a few different things. It's just that it's in with spaghetti, but there's also sour cream. The recipe actually has creme fraiche, but uh, sour cream's fine, people. You don't have to go the creme fraiche road. I'm trying to, if, if, if I do do recipes that have a really costly ingredient, I will basically tell people to either keep them out or substitute with something more affordable and creme fraiche versus sour cream, classic example. Creme fraiche is just posh out sour cream in my mind. But, I, I mean, I do love it. But things like that now, when every grocery bill is just getting more and more ridiculous, they're the sorts of things that make your bill go through the bloody roof. So find a cheaper alternative or even just leave some things out. I don't think this will freeze very well because it's... Um, sour cream in it some people would freeze it but I mean I will shove a lot of this in my face and also I've got a friend visiting later in the week who's like my garbage disposal unit I'm like here look in the fridge eat whatever you want and take whatever you want with you 
weak anemic food for vegans cauliflower you rarely buy it yeah because it's it's not that inspiring is it but hopefully this will inspire people too because i mean cauliflower is one of the veggies that is still relatively affordable it's more affordable getting it from like the farmer's market or your local community garden um but I think a lot of people just don't like it because of how our mums and our grandmothers cooked it. I mean, mum did an amazing cauliflower cheese. Yeah, well, we're doing, no, we're doing tinned tuna. This is all about cheap and cheery. I will occasionally do a posh fun flash great ingredients to work with recipe. Like I'm not going to be cheap and cheery every day, but the, um, the focus at the moment is just to find ways to, because this is, this is a bit posher. It's not your typical weeknight spag bowl, is it? All right, the parcel wood is up to boiling, so I'm just going to chuck that on low for now to, can just because I'm talking too much. Oh, also, this would probably take half the time it's going to take because I'm live and there's a lot of chatting going on. So back to our cauliflower. We want to sprinkle some salt over it. We're going to mix it all up together in a minute with our hands. Bit of salt, cracked pepper, cauliflower cheese makes you think of it. Yeah, I do a really yummy mac and cheese, but it doesn't have pasta in it. It's with cauliflower, and it tastes exactly like mac and cheese. I'll do that one day because that's a really that's a really good way to cook cauliflower. People change their minds about cauliflower after they have cauliflower mac and cheese, if it's a good one. Uh, we're going to chuck on a bit of oil, two tablespoons of that. This bottle's nearly empty, so I might just add a tiny bit more because that wasn't quite two tablespoons in my guesstimation. But, I mean, as soon as you're pouring shitloads of oil on a veggie, it's already taking it to a new level. Bring that on. Um, now, tarragon is the last ingredient. I do grow it, but it's not in season or my tarragon's dead. I'm not sure. But, again, at supermarkets, herbs are so expensive but a thing I discovered at Coles years ago is when these these little punnets that are normally like, I don't know, three or four bucks, when they're, they're used by date, they drop them down to like 30 cents. So I always walk past them because I have to go to Coles to get food for Sunny and a couple of like house cleaning type things. But I always walk past that aisle because this particular one doesn't have a 30 cent sticker on it, but heaps in my freezer do. And I just grab them and chuck them in the freezer as soon as I get home. And you've always got herbs to use. So the recipe said six sprigs of tarragon. I don't know if there's that many left in here. And I didn't look to see if I've got any more in the freezer. But there's more than enough. That's a pretty good amount of tarragon to use. And we're just literally going to chuck the sprigs into the um dish i think it doesn't say to only use half or whatever like some of these recipes will be like pan fry the herbs till they're crispy to garnish i can't be bothered with that on a weeknight just give me a bowl of pasta right so pans are the best utensils in the kitchen you want this cauliflower to be amazing so make sure it's all covered in oil and all the yummy stuff And then we're just going to pop the tarragon on the top, like push it all up a bit together. Make sure you've got the tarragon sprigs across it all so that the flavour, because I love tarragon, it's actually a really strong herb. But you could also use dried tarragon out of a jar or a little packet, you know, the herb packets that are even cheaper than the jars. The oven's still heating up. It takes a while to get up to 240. That's like mega, mega, mega hot. And these are going to take about 15 to 17 minutes until they're golden brown and tender. 
one of the reasons to go for the smaller florets means they'll cook quicker too. I'll get a timer because I always chat and forget I've got things in the oven. So I'm just going to wait for that to get to 240. Um, and then when we chuck the cauliflower in, we'll whack the pasta on and get all the other things ready because we're kind of just going to chuck it all together at the very end. I love real tuna. Like I love sashimi tuna. I really want to make, but it's not the right season for it, but in summer, remind me to make my tuna ceviche. Oh, my God, it is so good. It's got pineapple in it and people are like, huh? And even I was like that when I first started making it and it is incredible. Chilli, green chilli, the ones I love to eat. And then you make little tortilla chips to eat it with and it's so good. But, yeah, I'll still do fancy cooking every now and then because this is how I relax. I don't want to just do cheap and cheery. But, I mean, I'm doing bloody roasted cauliflower with tarragon. That's pretty posh. But it's also really affordable. I do block you good, Francesca. If you don't comment shortly, I'll block you again. No, I'm kidding. You get lots of it in summer, blue and yellow fin, and you can't give it away. Oh, tiny. I might have to jump across the pond and move in next door and be like, bring me the sashimi-grade stuff, thanks. Well, in fact, bring it all. It doesn't have to be sashimi-grade. I might even just chuck this in now while the other, no, I'll wait. I'll wait. So I'm using something that I've never used before tonight. I'm using these. Now, I don't know what Italian style means. Maybe it's got a bit of herbage. I don't know. But um, that was the only ones they had. I have gone out to restaurants, like cafe more than restaurants. Cauliflower's going in. Time is going on. I've had dinner at people's houses and stuff and they've obviously used this stuff because I always look at it and I'm like, why does your tuna look like that? Mine always is mushy <laughs> or it's in little chunks. Tori, I get lots of tuna in summer. I'm 53, divorced, full-figured. <laughs> I like walks on the beach and Lionel Richie. <laughs> Hello. Well, you're younger than me for starters. We like a full figure. Um I just can't move across the pond. I like my little island probably as much as you like yours. But, yeah, have you ever used tuna slices? I haven't. And this recipe called for two of these. Skeddy Nana, we're making Skeddy. Hello. So I did buy two. I mean, I'm assuming that it's going to be like tin tuna. But picture looks like bluefin. Don't know. I'm sorry. I'm really athletic. Awesome. <laughs> um, does it actually tell me? There's a recipe on the back. What type of tuna it is? Um, yellowfin. It's yellowfin. Don't be fooled by that. It looks blue on there, but it's not. But anyway, I've never actually ever bought this stuff in my life. And it's tuna slices in oil. And there they are. And now I know when I've looked in recipe books or I've been to people's houses and they've served up tuna that looks like that, why it looks like that and not like the tuna that comes out of the little circular tins. Just draining the oil. 
and I'll get the other one opened. It's like friggin' posh tuna. Now these tins were about a dollar more than the little circular tins, but the circular tins are only 95 grams. So you end up buying, you'd end up buying more circular tins to get up to the 250 grams that you need. So splash out, go the slices. Smells amazing. But if you don't like cauliflower or tin tuna, you will not like this recipe at all. <laughs> so don't make it tune in next time so here they are tuna slices and she doesn't say to mush them up or anything like that i mean they'll break up when they get chucked in the pasta you've never seen them it's getting on it no, well, neither had I. And I went to the tuna aisle and I was like, where are tuna slices? And then I saw up the top a little collection of these tins, little boxes with tins in them. I was like, well, there we have it. All right, we'll crank the water back up because we'll chuck the pasta on. I did Google the pasta price at um, spaghetti, a box of spaghetti or packet of spaghetti at Coles at the moment is 90 cents. And this is going to feed a family, this amount that I'm cooking. I mean, you can even feed your friends for dinner or lunch or whatever as well. Um, but I actually bought this pasta and I love, like, I'm a bit of a pasta snob. I love all the fresh pastas that you can buy. I, I can't be bothered making it myself. I don't have the bench space all the time. But um, this was even cheaper. Skipjack is usually ground up into tins albacore is better and that of export prices you're in the you know all the tuna boss tony i'm impressed so i've got my um water boiling salted and because i'm making the full recipe i'm going to chuck the whole box of actually no i'm not it says 400 grams so I do actually have a tin of, I'm sorry, a tin of container. Um, there's not enough in here to use at all. So I'm just going to take out roughly 100 grams worth, what I think is 100 grams worth top that little thing up this has now got three different types of spaghetti in it but i don't mind that for when i'm just cooking dinner on my own and i just want to have spaghetti for dinner and make one for lunch i prefer pasta at lunch time to be honest i think carbs and me are great together at night but anyway i love my carbs i'm not meant to eat them <laughs> after lunchtime but i don't care Life's too short to eat crap food. Oh, you work in fisheries. Awesome. Yum. I love my seafoods. Like, if I had to tomorrow, if I was told you have to cut every type of protein out of your diet except for one protein, seafood, thank you, done. wouldn't miss the chicken i mean i do cook with chicken a lot but would be happy to give it up the more i the, as of the older i'm getting cooked, chicken just grosses me out a bit now prepping it a lot of it <laughs> it's just like ooh. um red meat i hardly ever eat but i am going to be doing a korean beef soon um i can't eat pork i'd probably miss eggs but I wouldn't miss tofu. I don't even, I really try not to eat tofu. I keep thinking that it's probably one of those cheap and cheery ingredients that I might have to have a crack at, but 
I'll be researching the recipe I decide to try. I've eaten a lot of tofu in my life and I've never gone, yum, this is the best. I mean, I have definitely had better tofu um, and shittier tofu, but all of them are still in the not great for me uh, category. Not in, Don't find it very inspiring at all. But I'll have a crack. But yeah, seafood, don't take away my fishy, my oysters, <laughs> my tuna. Like, no, thank you. I want the ocean food. I live on a friggin' island where, as you would know, Tony, we have incredible seafood as well. Tofu does need marinating. I still don't like it that much. Well, it's not that I dislike it. I just think if you're substituting it for something else, eat the something else because the something else is always going to taste better. <laughs> I have been subjected to some really badly cooked tofu, which didn't help. I've also had some marinated tofu that has tasted delicious but just texturally hasn't been cooked properly. It's just one of those. But if I see like a silky tofu ice cream recipe, well, I don't have room to do ice cream in my freezer, but I'll try something one day. But I'm, I'll might, maybe I'll do a Yosha. I know Yosha Natalini, I think, does, or it might be Peter, or Pete, whatever his name is, Pete Fruit Loop. Um, Evans, I think he does a scrambled tofu. You said goodbye to tofu? That's polite. I'm more of a, I mean, I've got two vegetarian friends and I think when they have guests that aren't 100% vegetarian, they go tonight as a treat, we're having tofu. John Dory raw strips rolled and dipped in all olive oil, my dirty habit. Oh, mm, yum. Yeah, seafood's the bomb. I get so upset when people are like, if I'm having, if I'm cooking dinner for people and I just check what their dietary restrictions are and people are like, I don't like seafood. It's like, will it kill you if you eat it? Because I can cook amazing seafood. No, I just don't like it. What, every type of seafood under the sun, in the ocean? Yeah, tofu is a treat. How insulting is that? <laughs> All right, so she's a, she's a cook and needs about six to eight minutes. So I'm going to get, because we're going to, um, before we strain it, we're going to reserve three quarters of a cup of the cooking water. And that's always a trap for young players when you've got to reserve a cup that you, or three quarters of a cup or whatever that you strain and then you're like, oh, shit, she's all gone down the drain. So, yeah, remind me, guys, not strainy till we do that. Oh. Hey. Guess what? I love you. Yeah, I do. I love you. All right. So we've got that reserve all sitting there for in a minute when we reserve some of that. Um, so let me get the sour cream out of the fridge. Also, another little trick. Whenever you open like sour cream up and it's like that, give it a little whiskly doodah. Am I up to date on the true crime creators drama on YouTube? Don't you care? Hey Cody, how are you, Groover? Um, well, it depends who, of whom you speak. I mean, there's there's many a true crime drama under foot, underway at the moment. So yeah, can you give me a little bit more info? These little baby whisks are great for just breaking up the, the sour cream a bit. Always give it a good little whiskeroonie. 
You can use a teaspoon. I was just showing off. I've got a mini whisk. I didn't learn this. Like when I was at uni, we'd just get spoons of sour cream and blob it and they'd be like, I love the flavour, but why is it just this almost solid blob? Well, if you do this, it glugs and melts and goes everywhere and it's so much better. True crime drama ain't what it, yeah. That old crime drama ain't what it used to be. It used to be so much more entertaining, didn't it, Francesca? My, how we laughed. These days it's, what pisses me off is um, it's the same person that gazillions of channels are picking on and they've all got the same one-liners. It is a great tip, thank you. There's an axis of evil in the true crime community on YouTube. They do and say anything for clicks and donate. Yeah, I call them out on my Sleuths and Smooths Criminals channel. Oh, we laughed so friggin' hard. It, it really, we're, I'm so glad we all, emer all discovered YouTube at that time. There's also tiny channels going after them and then they become big because some people that are on YouTube, some YouTube consumers, at, i.e. subs, just want to hear different people using the same jokes and one-liners about Bullhorn Betty, for example, over and over again for hours and hours on end. Boring. Yeah, she's a fruit bat. But I've reacted to her like once or twice. That's I don't need to do it again. But all these little channels are starting up and they grow exponentially because there's a need on YouTube. There are all these people that just want to listen to people putting her down. It's it's such a yawn fest. Anyway, I've got to keep cooking. This is a cooking show. And I've forgotten what I was going to do next. I'm going to get my pasta strainer out of the cupboard. That's what I'm doing. <coughs> <laughs> Dull witted yawn fest. Yep, it is boring. Oh, Cody, good to hear you. Great, too, mate, or pretty good. All right, let's check that cauliflower and see how she's doing. See? Glad I put the timer on. I had no concept. Whoa. I'm going to... Smells like yum. It smells like tarragon. God, some of it's like char grilled within an inch of its life, and others are barely. Oh, there's going to be some really yummy. Oh, I don't think I've ever had cauliflower like that, like super crunchy. Bring in your pasta? Yeah, why not? Let's chuck that back in for just a couple more minutes. Some of it's still lily white, and others is. Others are colander, that's the word. I say strainer. I love my colander. It's all retro and cute. You love it. All right. Oh, something on the bottom of that tray is burning. I don't know what that's come from. You love my house, Francesca? You only get to see this much of it. When I'm in the kitchen, you do get to see more, obviously, from my living room. Just going to do the al dente check on the pasta. Grab a bit of pasta, fling it on the tiles. Whoops, she fell down. Hang on. Fling it at the wall. If it sticks, and it has... It's just there. <laughs> Spider pig. I say it's al dente when it's del dente when it sticks. I reckon it's like a minute away from being al dente. 
And yes, I did eat that off my tiles. I wash my tiles every night. I clean my tiles. When I clean the kitchen, everything gets a wipe down. But yeah, for me, one more minute. So while that's doing that, I'm just going to get a lemon. I've always got half a lemon floating around. The one ingredient that I must have in my kitchen at all times is a lemon because you can just do so much with them. Okay. I'm getting to you. I'll turn the oven off. Things are going to get a bit hectic here shortly, guys, so I won't be reading chat that much because it will be a rapid assembly, taste test, and then I'm out of here to eat my dinner. Um, but I do take the end off the lemon if it's a couple of days old because that dry bit at the end isn't great. How's the laptop? It's standing up. Well, it folds out <laughs> and it's standing up on a um, a little shelfy thing. Now it's on the screen. Someone will walk in and go, what's the black thing? Mind you, nobody's done that for ages, but... I used to be cooking and people would be like, what's the little red thing on the screen? I'd be like, it's my friggin' mouse. Like, are you right there? All right, so I've got the lemon ready too. Humanimal, hello. I'm on fire with my, we've obviously got the same tastes, Humanimal. I'm sure that a lot of people are waiting for me to do like peppered steak and three veggies and stuff. I just, this is not what I cook for me. Or oh, for others when they come over. All right, I reckon the past is good to go, so I'm going to... Wait, 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 wait. Before you strain it in your colander. Yeah, it's so good to see you getting on it. And I'm making spaghetti. Take three quarters of a cup of the water, the pasta water out, before we strain it. Do not rinse the pasta under water. Do not do that. It stops the sauce from sticking to it. Rinse rice, don't rinse pasta. Or I'll kill you. Just don't do it. All right. Now, I've got to pay friggin' attention um, because we've got our pasta. We're going to whack that in the pot. You can always, if you want to just dry off any tiny bits of moisture, if you can always chuck it back on what element you were boiling it on and just give it a couple of shakes. And if by magic... The water disappears. Let me do the assembling over here. So, into this pot of incredible goodness. First, we're going to add the sour cream. Half a cup. Guess it, Groovers. Just, we all know what a friggin' cup looks like. Just guesstimate. You can use creme fraiche according to the recipe, but I'm just going... Budget, cheap and cheery, sour cream, fine. Who doesn't love a creamy pasta? Anyone here who doesn't love a creamy pasta, get out. Um, the tuna, it didn't say to break up these slices, and like I was saying earlier, I've never bought these before. Pretty excited. They're just like a prettier version of the little tins. If there's a little bit of oil or whatever left in the tin, chuck that in too. It's going to break up when we mix it. And, yeah, although it does cost a dollar more a tin, you've got to buy more of the smaller tins because they're not as big. Oh, yum. This tuna is mint. Mm. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. We're going to add lemon juice, about a tablespoon. You don't love pasta at all, but you watch to support me. Thanks, Cody. That's true love. Man, this is a tough lemon. Um, use your hands to squeeze lemons. You can pick all the pips. This one doesn't have any pips left in it because it's only the butt end of a huge lemon, but 
your fingers stop the seeds going through and you don't have to wash your lemon juice unless you need shitloads of lemon juice and you've got arthritic hands then use your lemon juicy thing but one less thing to wash and save that like i said the other night that's brilliant for doing the dishes with true story all right lemon juice is in um and we're also going to add the reserved cooking water and mix this all up tongs baby tongs i'm not using hands or cooking scissors i'm using tongs if you want to get those fancy pasta spoons go for it but give it all a good mixerama oh shit i forgot to take the cauliflower out i turned the oven off but left it in oh but she perfect Oh, you don't chuck the cauliflower in till the end anyway. It goes on top. Interesting. All right. Let me just get some parmy out of the fridge. Now, this is one of my favourite things. It was my mama's and Palmer's and Wise. This is not the usual brand I buy, but it was the cheapest and it was still crazy expensive. Oh, I just put it all in the pasta, Francesca. Went straight back in. Yeah, it's, I love sour cream. I love creme fraiche too, but do I pay so much more for fr creme fraiche when it's really just poshed up sour cream? <laughs> if we're doing budget weeknight cheap and cheery cooking, creme fraiche doesn't fit. Same with the capers. I think I do have capers. I usually do have capers in the fridge. So just going to whack some parmy. God, cheeses is so, 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 so expensive. At the moment, it's crazy. And back to our pasta. So at the moment, it's looking pretty white with tiny flecks of tuna visible. German, hello. Um, For dramatic effect, I'm going to plate it up on a larger bowl. And so we've put the creme fraiche, the tuna, the lemon juice and the reserved cooking water in. We're going to stir it to combine and now just plate it up. Where's that tuna, that sliced tuna? I want lots of it. Thank you very much. Don't you be hiding from me. The, the sliced tuna has stayed relatively intact. And I've got to tell you, for the first time ever using it, it's really yummy. But now I also know the mystery is solved. Why cafes and friends of mine cook with tuna that looks like that, not tiny pieces. One more for dinner. I'm quite happy to eat this pasta even when all the tuna's gone. Right, so that's what you're doing. Then here's the cauliflower we roasted earlier. And it's so bizarre because, like I said, I've never, ever had cauliflower in a pasta. But look at that. She golden and crunchy. So we're then going to chuck the cauliflower on top. It doesn't get mixed through. It gets chucked on top like a fancy little garnish. I used up all the tarragon in the cooking or the roasting, but if you had any left over, you could put a bit of fresh tarragon on top. But it's the cauliflower that's going to make this sort of more filling, I guess, and also make the food go a bit further. There we go. There is a little piece of, actually, I'll put that on last. And then um, we're going to add our 
Oh, shit. Wait. Capers. Now, if you don't have capers, don't worry. But this jar is, I Googled it tonight, is $2.70. And these will last for, like, ever. You don't ever use shitloads of capers. So I think it's worth, if you like the flavour, they can really make things they just add these pops of flavour. I'm not even going to bother using one of my little strainers or anything, although I will need to use a smaller spoon. I'm just going to get some out of the jar and add them on top as well for a little flavour pop. But, yeah, if you don't have capers, don't freak out. If you do have them, chuck them on. No, there's no garlic in this recipe. It's all in the cauliflower, the capers and the tuna, I guess, the flavour. And then lastly, my mum's gorgeous little parmesan cheese curly-whirly maker over the top. I'm a palmy fiend. And a tiny sprig of tarragon that didn't get completely char-grilled. Um, where's a bit where there's some tuna? Here we go. Look at that, guys. And then, yeah, these beautiful crispy bits of cauliflower. I'm going to do a taste test and then I'm logging off because I'm so hungry and this smells amazing. I'm just in shock that I've just made a tuna with a tuna pasta that has cauliflower in it. It's, it's pretty as hell. Look at the, I mean, the thumbnail's prettier because that's a styled photo. But that was really quick, like it's 47 minutes. I, if I wasn't live, this probably would have been done in, I don't know, maybe 35 minutes. I've been pretty quick in the kitchen tonight. But I want a bit of cauliflower, a bit of tuna, a caper, and some of the spaghetti for the taste test. Oh, my God, dinner tonight is delicious. I can't wait. Hang on. Here we go. She's going in. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Oh, hell yeah. Mmm. <laughs> porn. That is food porn. That is definitely black book standard. It's probably even better than my black book. Um, that tuna, I don't know what it is about sliced tuna, but I've just made my first ever sliced tuna dish and it's so yummy. Yum. I'm glad I've discovered that. I'm glad this recipe put me onto it. Thank you, Donna Hay. The little pop with the caper is gorgeous, but the roasted cauliflower, some of the pieces are like, golden and they were just roasted in olive oil salt and pepper and then tarragon sprigs and it's honestly if you don't like cauliflower you will have to have this like i can still tell it's cauliflower but it's like um next level deliciousness why didn't our mums make cauliflower like this when we were little? I mean, yeah, my mum did make a good cauliflower cheese, but holy shit, this stuff's amazing. I'm having cauliflower and pasta. I can't believe it. <laughs> mm. There's little bits of crunch. Um, mmm. Hmm. Yep. I grow my own tarragon too, Jonah, but there isn't any on the plant at the moment. I don't know whether it's carpeted or if it's hibernating in winter. Um, the outer parts of cauliflowers, yeah, they're beautiful too when you roast them. Yeah, this is a 10 out of 10. So have a go, guys. 
The link to the recipe is in the description. The only thing I changed was I used sour cream instead of creme fraiche. But despite looking posh as all hell, that is actually cheap and cherry cooking. Dishes like this don't cost a lot of money. It's just putting in that little bit of extra effort. And I tell you what, it was worth it. This is so good. Better than any pasta I've had in a long time. Give it a crack. If you try it out, please leave a comment under the video, either on Cheap and Cherry Cooking or here on, or on Tasmania Calling. I also am more than happy if you've got things you'd like me to try or an ingredient you want me to work with for suggestions. And um, seeds of French tarragon are infertile. You need to propagate by root division or buying new. Hmm, okay. That's weird. I thought I've, I don't know if mine's French then because I don't think I've done any of that and I've had it on the annual, but I'll check. Super yummy. Um, yeah, please leave a comment. More than happy to try out anything you want or try an ingredient, just not eggplant or pork or olives <laughs> and um, or rat. But, yeah, give it a crack. And also if you could give me a little thumbs up on the way out, that would be awesome. Thanks for hanging out and highly recommend this. Cheap and cheery, but just a few little different processes and suddenly you've got a restaurant-quality dinner. Have a great night, everyone. I am going to go and shove food in my face hole. Love you all. Bye.